Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be denesting a radical. This problem was inspired by comments by Nadia Fan and other viewers. In this video, we're going to go ahead and find a formula for the square root of x plus square root of y. First of all, what does denesting mean? Whenever you have an expression like this, we're going to try to write it as the sum or difference of two square roots. Because right now we do have the square root of something plus the square root of another number. And this is kind of like a nested square root, right? So we're going to get rid of that and just write it with one level. And I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to do the following. First of all, I'm going to write this square root of x plus root y. And then I'll add its conjugate and then call this m and then I'll write the same thing with a minus sign in between and I'm gonna call that n and what I'm gonna do next is square each on both sides let's do it and see what happens if you square both sides you're gonna get m squared and if you square both sides you're gonna get n squared let's go ahead and write down what happens in each case and we're gonna put it together First expression, let's call this first and second. In the first expression, notice that we have a plus b. So if you use that identity to square it, you're going to get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And 2ab is just going to give you the square root of x squared minus y from difference of two squares. Now, here's the important part. And you can see it in the comments too, that this expression can only be denested when x squared minus y is a perfect square. And we're going to test it out towards the end, okay? But this needs to be a perfect square. Otherwise, you can't do it, okay? So this is going to give us m squared. Notice that square root of y cancels out, and we get x plus x, which is 2x plus 2 times the square root of x squared minus y equals m squared. If you do the same thing with the second equation, you're going to get x plus root y plus x minus root y. Root y is going to cancel out again, but this time you're going to get the same thing with a minus sign. So it's basically going to be the conjugate because these two things are conjugates. Their squares are also conjugates. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now here's what we're going to do with these two equations. From here, we can basically solve for m and n, right? But here's what we're going to do. First, square root both sides. Since these expressions m and n are both positive, and how do I know that? If you look at the first expression, uh, we're adding two radicals. They're both positive, well defined in the real world, obviously. So we get a positive term, sum. In the second one, x plus root y is greater than x minus root y for obvious reasons, right? If x and y are real, so that's why that's positive too. So m and n are both positive, which means we can basically just use the positive square root. So m can be written as the square root of 2x plus 2 times the square root of x squared minus y. And n can be written as 2x minus 2 times the square root of x squared minus y. Great. So since we know m and n, we can find the, our expression from here. But how do we find it? Let's go back to the original equation, the system. Now, notice that we wrote the sum is m, the difference is n. And we're trying to find this. So if you add these two equations and divide by 2, you get square root of x plus root y. Let me rewrite it uh, to make it more clear. So this plus this is equal to m. And the difference is equal to n, right? And we're trying to find this one. So we're going to add these equations up. These two are going to cancel out. We're going to get 2 times the square root of x plus root y equals m plus n. Therefore, 1 times square root of x plus root y is just going to be m plus n divided by 2. But wait a minute. We do have expressions for m and n, right? So we can go ahead and plug those in. Make sense? Okay. So here's what we're going to do then. We're going to go ahead and replace m and n with that. But let me go ahead and erase this area because I already showed you how we got that, right? So now we're going to go ahead and move this stuff up so that you can kind of see them together. All right. So 
Here's what we have. Square root of x plus root y is equal to m plus n divided by 2. And this is m and n, right? So we can go ahead and add these up and divide by 2. So the square root of x plus root y from here is going to be the square root of 2x plus 2 times the square root of x squared minus y plus 2x minus the 2 times the square root of x squared minus y. So m and n basically being added. They're on the radicals. And all of that is divided by 2. So far so good. So that should be the answer, right? But we'll simplify it a little bit more. You know how? We can take out a 2 here. Notice that. That's a 2. All of these terms have a 2. So we can take out a common factor, right? And that 2 will be under the radicals. Therefore, we can basically just take out a square root of 2. And now we'll have square root of x plus the square root of x squared minus y. This is going to look a little simpler. And the same thing with the minus sign. And then all of that is divided by 2. Now, obviously, two, root 2 goes into 2 because this is basically root 2 times root 2. One of them cancels out, and there's a reason, good reason, why I'll leave that. Because I do have now a radical divided by another radical. So if you go ahead and split this up into two pieces, we can go ahead and write it as follows under the same radical. The square root of x plus square root of x squared minus y all over 2 plus the square root of x minus the square root of x squared minus y over 2. And this will be our formula for this radical, which is basically how you can denest it. Again, if x squared minus y is not a perfect square, then you cannot denest this. So you want this to be a perfect square, okay? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, and you're going to decide which method is better. So for my second method, for, I'm going to do this. First of all, notice that I'm trying to denest this. I'm going to assume that this can be written as root a plus root b. This implies that its conjugate can be written as the conjugate of the result, obviously, right? And now from here, we get the following. We're going to go ahead and multiply these two things side by side. That's going to give us x squared minus y, under the radical, by the way, equals a minus b, from difference of two squares. Awesome. Here's what we're going to do next. Since we do have that square root of a plus square root of b is equal to x plus uh, square root of this, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. And guess what? We're going to do it for the other expression too. So let me write that as well. And now we kind of do something similar, but kind of different too, right? So let's square both sides. Let's square both sides and do that twice, okay? And then we're going to get the following. From the first one, we're going to get a plus b plus 2 root ab equals x plus root y. From the second one, we're going to get a plus b minus 2 root ab equals x minus root y. Awesome. Guess what we're going to do? Add these, right? Of course, things are going to cancel out. And from here, these two cancel out and these two cancel out. So this gives us something real nice. 2a plus 2b or not 2b equals 2x. And of course, from here, a plus b becomes x. All right. Let's go ahead and save it and see if we can use it later on, right? Wait a minute. Don't I have another equation? Yes, I do. Here we go. I also know a minus b, so I can solve for a and b. That's the goal, right? Because we're trying to denest this, and obviously, we need to solve for a and b. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and rewrite this as a system. a plus b is equal to x. a minus b is equal to the square root of x squared minus y. Awesome. And that expression came up before, right? Now, what are we going to do since we're trying to solve for a and b? We're going to add these equations and divide by 2. That's going to give us a equals x plus the square root of x squared minus y divided by 2. And by subtracting these equations, a cancels out and b becomes x minus the square root of x squared minus y divided by 2. And what do you do with those? <laughs> well, we already said that the square root of x plus root y, or we assumed, that it could be written as root a plus root b. So, square root of x plus root y should be written as the square root of a, which is x plus the square root of x squared minus y divided by 2, and plus the square root of b, which is the same thing, or it's conjugate with a minus sign, right? And that should be pretty much what it is. Now, let's go ahead and test this formula with a number, shall we? Okay, so a test. 
let's use this number. By the way, there's a good way to check if this can be denested, right? This is A and this is B. So A squared minus B is equal to 49 minus 13, which is 36. And yes, 36 is a perfect square, so we can do it. Great, let's get to work. Square root of 7 plus root 13. And it's very easy, actually. Memorizing a formula might look difficult first, but if you apply it a few times, you're going to realize it's actually fairly easy. Make sense? One of the things you need to evaluate is the square root of 7 squared minus 13 here in this case. That's going to be an important number. And as you know, it's the square root of 36, which is 6. So keep that number in mind and then do the following. You're going to have to add two square roots. And then in the numerators, you're going to have this number, 7, plus this number, 6, and divide by 2. And then 7 minus 6 divided by 2. That's it. Easy. So it's going to be square root of 13 over 2. And it's going to be the square root of 1 over 2. So that should be good enough, but we can make it a little better by writing it as follows. Square root of 13 over root 2, square root of 1 over root 2. And then now we can go ahead and write these together with a common denominator and then use the conjugate to get rid of the bottom radical. That's going to give you two, square root of 26 plus square root of 2 divided by 2. And if you want, you can definitely write this as 1 half times the square root of 26 plus the square root of 2. No matter what you do, it's going to be the pretty much the same thing. And this brings us to the end of another video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. And I apologize for the long video. I just had to cover a lot of things. And see you until next time. Bye-bye.